Well, when you say new today, I mean, we knew some of that already. We knew about the emails. In terms of her testimony, mm -hmm. I don't know that she testified that much differently today than she has the previous time she's testified. So I'd have to go back and look at the transcript. All right. Simple question. You've looked at the transcript, I imagine, the last 72 hours. What have you come up with? Well, I think there's uh, there's some new information, Chuck, and some clarifying information in all three tranches of Benghazi. If you look at the tranche that I think Secretary Clinton uh, has the most information on, it's that first tranche, the before. Uh, when she's asked uh, whether she takes responsibility, she says yes, but when you ask responsibility for what, um, I can't tell you what she's taking responsibility for. And my main fear there is how are we better prepared to avoid the next Benghazi if we don't fully understand who made the errors and where the errors were made last time. So with respect to, to responsibility, uh, with the placing of the mission, with the request for more security, you know, I have a perspective which is rooted in the previous ARB that the Secretary of State himself or herself should do that personal review. Right. Uh, her position is that there are people and processes in place and she relies on security experts. Uh, we've got to get that reconciled uh, because I think Mr. Cummings and I both agree the penultimate objective is to avoid the next Benghazi. Let me ask you, we did a little calculation here on the uh, number of words that you used during the hearing. You, you said the word Benghazi 17 times, Blumenthal 35 times, emails 76 times. You had made a promise that you were keeping the focus on Benghazi. Do you feel as if you did uh, as much or, you know, even some Republicans were wondering why you were going down the Sidney Blumenthal, uh, what some called a rabbit hole? Well, I don't think it's a rabbit hole, Chuck, and I'll tell you why. I mean, I, I respect the fact that other people have different perspectives, but to me, those are not Sidney Blumenthal's emails. They are Secretary Clinton's emails to or from Sidney Blumenthal, and every one of them relates to Libya and Benghazi. So I, I'm not reading Blumenthal emails about bridesmaids' dresses or, or wedding plans or yoga. Th these are all about Libya and Benghazi, and to the extent that he was one of the more prolific emailers to her on the subject matter, how do you not ask, how does this person who has no formal role in government and no expertise in Libya or Benghazi, how does he have unfettered access to you, but the mm -hmm. ambassador, there is not a single email to or from him. So I, I get that people want to refer to these as Sidney Blumenthal emails. They're Hillary Clinton emails that she received from him. And, and frankly, I think it'd be a dereliction of duty if you didn't ask about them. Well, no one is questioning whether to ask about them. I think it was the amount of time spent on it. It seemed like a larger portion of time was spent on that. For instance, I didn't hear as many questions that I expected to hear on the Libya policy in general. You know, the vacuum that was left that ultimately created the security situation that we had in Benghazi that led to the death of four Americans. I think Peter Roskman and Mike Pompeo uh, both ask uh, maybe all of their series of questions on the on the TikTok memo and 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 I remember Susan Brooks having a stack of of emails in 2011 versus 2012 and 2011 there was a heightened interest in, in Libya and Benghazi in 2012 it appeared to dissipate at least according to the email so I mean Chuck as you know but when you go into hearings. Each of the seven members has, has his or her own own lane. That, that's mm -hmm. what they're going to ask on. And and I do think it is it is relevant on two different levels. Uh, whether or not his emails were solicited or unsolicited, you can certainly argue is irrelevant. But but she said they were unsolicited, and I do think credibility is always relevant. If they were right. truly unsolicited, then, then she wouldn't have changed her testimony on Thursday. Let me ask you this. If, if You said this the other night on Fox with Greta uh, Van Susteren. You said, part of what I saw yesterday, Greta, wasn't all that constructive, and for the American people to just tune into a nine-hour food fight, I would err on the side of a private one before I would do that. It was in response to a question about future witnesses that you would bring on, whether it would be on TV or not. It sounds like you may regret how you went about uh, in, uh, questioning Secretary Clinton, that maybe you, you should have done some of it off camera and only some of it on camera. Do you, do you want, do you, what do-over do you want? Well, Chuck, it was a voluntary interview. I, I didn't send a subpoena to Secretary Clinton. It was a voluntary interview, and, and um, she wanted it to be in public. I, I, I wrote a letter several months ago uh, giving her an option. 
Um, and she chose public, and, and that's well within her rights. I can just tell you that of the 50-some-odd interviews we have done thus far, the vast majority of them have been private, and, and, and you don't see the bickering among the members uh, of Congress in private interviews. You don't see any of that. So the, TV the venue camera that adds, is most constructive— you think the TV, the TV camera adds, uh, adds to the grandstanding on both sides of the aisle? <laughs> What do you think, Chuck? I mean, you've been following Congress for a long time. I can just tell you in the private interviews, there is never any of what you saw Thursday. It is one hour on the Republican side, one hour on the Democrat side, which is why you're going to see the next two dozen interviews done privately, because it is, I mean, look at the other investigations that are being done right now. The, the lowest learner investigation that was just announced, was that public or private? How about Comey's investigation? Is that public or private? The private ones always produce better results. Very quickly, Secretary Clinton, was she a cooperative witness? Uh, she answered the questions, uh, and, and I would note, I, I don't think I ever cut her off. She was given ample opportunity, uh, so she answered the questions, yeah. If, if that's your definition of cooperative, yes. Is that yours? Uh, you know, I've always uh, also injected an element of, of wholeness and completeness uh, and also truthfulness in the definition of, of, of cooperative. Uh, and I'll give you one example. I gave her an opportunity to, to, to tell me where the 90 to 95 percent figure comes from. Um, uh, she's wrong about that. So did she cooperate in answering the question? Yes. Was it an accurate answer? No. All right, Congressman Gowdy, I will leave it there. Thank you. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.